Hello my friend, it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. Here's how you can start doing pull-ups at any level of strength and work your way up. The first thing we'll cover is grip. Generally, an overhand grip is called a pull-up and an underhand grip is called a chin-up. While they do target slightly different muscles, I've done plenty of both. And in my opinion, there is not a significant difference in difficulty. You'll be better at whatever grip you practice, just start with what feels natural. In this video, I'll use pull-up as the umbrella term for all exercises in which the torso is pulled towards the hands. In this video, there are multiple variations of pull-ups. They increase in difficulty, and we call them progressions. Find a progression you can do safely and easily. Work it hard once or twice a week until you can hit the goal for sets and reps, and then move on to the next progression. Make sure your movement is slow and controlled, with a slight pause at the top and bottom. Don't use momentum or kip like this. You're only likely to injure yourself. The first exercise is a wall pull-up. It looks easy, and it is, but they're a great therapeutic exercise for those with back or arm injuries, or people that are completely new to conditioning. Work these until you can do three sets of 50. What this means is you do one set of as many as you can, or 50, without stopping. If you can do this, wait a few minutes, and then do a second set of as many as you can, or 50. And then repeat this for a third set of as many as you can, or 50. For example, your numbers might look like 50, 50, 29, or 50, 35. Use this system for all progressions. The next step is a horizontal pull-up at chest height. Generally, the lower the bar or rings, the harder the exercise. You can do this from a railing or tie two towels around a pull-up bar. If you want to use the rings, they're sold on Amazon, or I'll soon sell them on my website, hybridcalisthenics.com. Either way, work these until you can do three sets of 30. From here, we can lower the bar or rings and do horizontal pull-ups at hip height. By the way, some people call horizontal pull-ups Australian pull-ups because they're down under. <laughs> Sorry. They're actually sometimes called that. If this is too hard, you can always split the difference by putting the bar anywhere between chest and hip height. Never be afraid to take it slow if you feel better doing it. Progressing too quickly can lead to joint pain. Do these until you can do three sets of 25. The next progression is jackknife pull-ups. The rings are slightly raised, but you're pulling your body up vertically at first. You're also assisting with your locked out legs. To make it easier, you can slightly bend your legs. Do these until you can do 3 sets of 20. The next progression is finally the regular pull-up. Congratulations on getting to this point. They can be pretty hard for some people, so pat yourself on the back. I would not move on from jackknife pull-ups until you can do 3 good regular pull-ups. If you can't do this yet, keep doing jackknife pull-ups and use less assistance from your legs. Work these until you can do 2 sets of 12. From here, we'll move our hands together and do narrow pull-ups. An underhand grip on this exercise is sometimes more comfortable. Putting the hands close together like this puts more workload on your arms. This will start building your arm strength for the one-arm pull-up. If you need to, you can slowly move your hands together inch by inch. Work these until you can do two sets of nine. The next step is the one-hand pull-up. They're also called uneven pull-ups, but one-hand pull-up sounds cooler, right? They require a lot more grip strength to hold on. Your grip is very important to functional strength, so this is a good time to build that up. Work these until you can do two sets of nine with your hand assisting at the wrist, and then work up to two sets of nine with your hand at the forearm. Our penultimate progression is the archer pull-up. Although the one-arm pull-up requires a lot of back strength, I find the archer pull-up helps prepare you by developing an extra bit of back strength. Your goal can be two sets of seven, but just work these until you're better at one-arm pull-ups. Do your sets one side at a time, don't alternate. Alternation makes it easier. The way you grip your pulling arm matters. If you're training one-arm chin-ups, you can use an underhand grip. The straighter your assisting arm, the harder the exercise. And finally, we have the one-arm pull-up or chin-up. If you get to this point, congratulations, it's quite rare. Although many people claim to be able to do them with ease, you usually don't see them demonstrate. Here's an important note. If you can only do one or two or three, it's an impressive feat, but I think you should exercise with the earlier progressions. You can do more of them, and it just seems like a better workout. Remember that the goal of these pull-ups isn't necessarily to get to the point where you can do one-arm pull-ups. It's for pulling strength. This is why I don't really use negatives, although some people love them. If you were training to, for example, bench press 300 pounds, you probably wouldn't do 300 pound negatives. You just bench press lower weight until you can do 300 pounds. That's how I see it. If you want dedicated one-arm pull-up training, I like isometric holds. You can try them out. And yes, my one-arm pull-ups are not perfect, but I'm always working on them. That's it for now. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'll try to answer all of them. Thank you so much. I am your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. Talk soon.